This Why conference will and... now be recorded. You can go ahead okay, and uh, take over. All right. Thank you for the wonderful introduction, Karen. Um, folks, I'd like to thank you all for coming to this presentation. I, I really appreciate you all taking the time out of your day to come and listen to me talk about the Youth Opportunities Fund. Now, let's let's get right into it. So what is the Youth Opportunities Fund? Basically, as you might have seen in the advertisements, free money. It costs no money to apply it, and it's basically free money for your clubs and your individual club members. So a few little facts about the Youth Opportunities Fund is that it's supported by the Kiwanis, and um, none of the fund is none of the money in the fund is um, none of the money in the goodness none of the money in the fund is from the membership dues that you pay every year. All the money is from the interest within the Kiwanis clubs. So this grant is open to all clubs and members of Key Club. Now the only exception there is is that you have to be a good standing key club member and a club. So basically, if you paid your dues, you'll, you'll be set. And uh, this club, the, this grant sponsors projects that serve and better and fix their communities. So if you have an idea that will better your community, please apply for the Youth Opportunities Fund. After all, it is open to every single key clubber within the world. So how can it help you? The, the Youth Opportunities Fund is a is a grant that can support your club service project. If you need financial support, apply for the Youth Opportunities Fund. It's basically a scholarship that will support your club. Um, if you need support for ICON, if you need financial support, apply for the Youth Opportunities Fund. You know, this grant is supposed to empower student leaders and empower teens to better serve the community. And what better way can you do so by attending ICON or doing a service project within your community? Um, now, these two points might not apply to you, but life happens sometimes. So if you're a club that isn't within a district and you need assistance, please apply for the Youth Opportunities Fund. Or if you've experienced a natural disaster. So this scenario might go out to the Florida and Bahama districts where they're kind of suffering through a big old hurricane right now. And they'll probably apply for this grant to get their club up and running. So I'd like to go over a few examples on what the Youth Opportunities Fund Fund has sponsored. There's a club in Texas, the Sci-Fi High School Key Club. Um, this club had students read onto cassette tapes and they distributed these cassette tapes throughout the county to increase literacy within their county. And the, the Youth Opportunities Fund funded for the books and the cassette tapes. Um, another example is uh, Brockton, Massachusetts. They, they use the money to build a playground within their community. So the, there's a huge horizons on what you can do with the Youth Opportunities Fund. And what the, the only limit and the only standard you have to follow is if it works along the key club mission and core values. That is what you have to go off of. And that's quite a big range of things to go off of. So it's basically you can do you could do anything with the Youth Opportunities Fund, and I, I might have not stated before, but if you have any questions or if my if the hearing and the audio isn't too well, please speak up. So I'd like to go over a few facts of the Youth Opportunities Fund, and the, the these series of facts are to show you how accessible this grant is, and we see that out of 138 applicants, 88 applicants were accepted, so that's over half, but that's pretty good. And within that 88, we see that 36, 36 folks that applied for the grant received 100% of what they asked for. And 38 of those folks received over 50% of what they requested. And within the whole cycle of 2018 and 2019, $77,000 was donated to various clubs and members of Key Club. So with these grants, I'd like to show you that it's open to everybody. Anyone can apply if you're a good standing member. But what I'd like to point out, which is the, the most astonishing fact of this whole presentation is out of the 138 people that applied for the Youth Opportunities Fund, none were from the Southwest. And this year I'd like to change that because I want our district to tap into a resource that can greatly support all of us. So if you have any questions on applying for this grant, please feel free to ask myself 
at the key to the southwest at gmail.com or you lieutenant governor. Um, so here's some important information before we delve into the application process. Uh, the grant ranges from $100 to $2,000. Uh, all the grants applications are due at the at 11:59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 15th of October. So you have a whole month and a half to prepare for this grant. Bring it up to your club. Bring it up to your um, executive board members at your school. You know, this is a grant that will greatly support individual key clubbers and clubs as a whole. Um, this grant. So something that was suggested by many of the international trustees of the past year was that you should apply for a portion of the project's expenses. Now, this is really important because it shows that if you are asking for a portion of the expenses, it shows that you've gone the extra mile to get communal support for your project. You've contacted insurance companies, um, local service organizations, Kiwanis clubs for support. If you can get the backing of your community, it shows that your project will be more successful and you'll have a higher chance of getting the community involved. Uh, all the applications are online, so at the end of this presentation, I will send you the application, or you can look at the link. Um, I'll have the lieutenant governor send it out on the 15th. And uh, every at the end of every cycle, you have to fill out a final report. So this will be one year after the grant was given to you. So you'll have to fill out a final report, which has all the receipts, and an evaluation of how your project gone. If your project didn't go too well, that's all right. As long as you submit this final report with all the uh, financial documents to support your um, expenditures and where the money went and you were truthful to the Youth Opportunities Fund agreements. So I, I broke up the application into seven main parts. And these main parts are basically how this application is structured. So there's um, club contact, information and your contact information. Uh, there's a project timeline. They'd like to know when you are hosting meetings, when you plan on setting up, and when you plan on building decorations and things of that nature. Um, project information. What date is it going to be hosted on? What's your project design like? Um, and we'll talk about why it's important to paint a picture of what your project's going to be like. Um, your budget. They'd like to know where you're allocating your money and where you're getting your money. Uh, donation and other support organizations. Have you reached out to organizations without, within your community to support your project? That's something really important that Key Club wants to see when they review your applications on November. But also, I think this is probably one of the most important topics within the application, but they're equally as important. Community relevance. Re relevance. If your project supports and helps your community, you have done half the race. That's what Key Club International wants to see. Does your project play a role in your community? Does it help out your community in any way? And we'll go over that in the application. Um, some things that at the end of all this, you have to get a few signatures from your principal, your, fac your faculty advisor, your president, and your secretary. So now we delve in into the application. So are there any questions at all before we delve into this application? Hi, Eric. Yes, I have a question. This is Ginger. Um, yes. You said, you said two dates. You said something October 15th, and then you said a November 15th. Um, um, the November 15th, I don't know what I said there. But the due date for the Youth Opportunities Fund application is October 15th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yes. Anything else, folks? All right. So I, I guess we'll go on into the application. So the first part of this application is discussing um, your contact information and what your project's name and your key club name. So basic information that you'd be able to fill out. Um, and then they'd like your faculty advisor's email, uh, your phone number, your school's phone number. Where'd you learn about the Youth Opportunities Fund? After all, this fund is for all key clubbers. And they'd like to know where they can build on and where they can distri distribute information to get more folks to apply for this. So they'd like to know, has your club received the Youth Opportunities Fund in, in the past? And they'd like to for you to, to 
give them five additional club contacts. So just in case you can't be contacted, somebody else can be contacted. So now we look into the project information. So they basically like a summary of what you plan on doing. So if we see that what, what they wrote is they, they wrote where they plan on putting the money and how they plan on buying these seedlings. We see that they discuss when this project will take place. It's all right if it's through it's a season or if it's one specific date. And we see that they'd like to know when you plan on hosting meetings and setups for your project. We'll discuss the grant budget at the end of the presentation, but it's something very important that you should keep in mind while making your application. And they'd like to know where you um, plan to use all the money you get to support other parts of the project. Where do you plan on putting some of the donations from the community into supporting your project? Where do you plan on putting the Youth Opportunities Fund into your project? Things, things like that. So now we look at your budgeting plans. They, they'd like to know where you are getting the money from, how much money would you like, um, do you, if, if there's anything else they should know about this project budget. And we see that they propose three budgets. And it's very good that they propose three budgets because they're planning for situations that might come up. Maybe they couldn't receive a grant from one organization, or maybe they've depleted their club funds. So it's nice that you plan ahead of time just in case some problems arise. And uh, we see the Key Club Youth Opportunities Fund letter of agreement and the release form. So those are just forms that will state that you are going to follow the Youth Opportunities Fund um, guidelines and rules. So if you get those forms in early, you'll get the money early. And the process is the um, the international trustees will review your applications on November at the November board meeting, and then after that, on the first uh, and in mid January, they will release who has received the grant and etc. So, and another optional piece is if you'd like to add some in some additional information and photographs about your project, if you've done it before, um, they, they'd like for you to send it. So they state that it won't affect your application at all. So your project can be new. Your project can be something you've done um, repeatedly, repeatedly, you know. So it's basically up to you if you want to put those three photographs in. So here's my favorite part, the community importance and the relevance uh, to your community. Uh, so they ask, is your is the grant being requested for the club or the individual? But they, now they go into, what is your project like? So they'd like a brief description on it. So this project is basically growing trees within the community because the amount of trees has been depleted after the deforestation to build more development. So the, you can see this project has a strong importance within their community. Uh, why does your community need this project? What have you done so far with the project? So they'd like to know how does this tie within your community? What have you done with your project? Have you reached out to various community organizations, businesses, local folks within the community, things like that? Um, does this project solve a problem in your community? If you can answer that question, that's wonderful. You know, if you can give a hard, solid yes, you're well on your way in receiving the grant. Um, they'd like to know, does it solve anything for? In, so, in the case of this school, Denton High School they are solving the deforestation problem and they're planning to solve it by growing more trees to grow more canopy and canopy space and they'll have more shade and they'll teach the community of the environmental importance and now we see the project design um, so they'd like to know how do you plan on executing this project um, who's going to govern what who's going to plant these trees you know they'd like to know how your project is going to be executed. And the, the most important thing you should take out of this is you have a 500 word limit for these um, more complex questions and a 100 word limit for the smaller questions. So what you should keep in mind is you want to write with quality and not quantity. And Cindy Shu, the international trustee of New York and California stated that if you can paint a picture with your words, that's what international trustees like, you know, and, and we'll go over that at the end of the presentation. So 
Now, now we see that this school has proposed three budgets. So they have a plan budget, an alternative budget, and a dream budget. And we see that they have different incomes that they'll receive. And this is good because it shows that they've planned for scenarios. You know, we see that the plan budget is around $900 less than the dream budget. And this is what Key Club International wants to see. They want to see that you've thought ahead and you are foreseeing the future, per se, on if something happens. So with your budget, as you can see, your budget doesn't have to be elaborate. Um, this budget was probably made on Google Sheets or um, Apple, an Apple app. You can make your budget anywhere you'd like, as long as your budget can communicate where your money is coming in, who's giving you the money, where do you plan on spending that money. And um, with your budget, they'd like for you to collect the receipts after and submit them along with your final report. Um, so looking at the application, these are a few things you should keep in mind while applying for the Youth Opportunities Fund. Does this application meet the guidelines and requirements of the Youth Opportunities Fund? The only guideline you really have to reach is if it supports the Key Club mission and um, goals, core values. That's all you have to, that's, a, that's such a broad range to execute a project in. Is this beneficial or needed in the community? Um, are there outcomes of this project? Can your project have lasting impacts to your community? Are the finances specific and appropriate? Are there opportunities to involve the community in financing or don don donating towards your project? So this last point is really important because if you can cut down a cost on something by getting somebody in the community to donate a particular service or an asset, that's, that's very important because it cuts down on your budget and you have more spending power. You know, so it doesn't hurt to ask somebody in the community. You know, ask your DJ to, if they'd like to play music. You know, that, that, that gets some recognition within the community, but it also gets you a free service. Think of, think of things like that. So here are my three tips, um, and these were, tips were suggested by Foster Hillis, our past international trustee, and Cindy Shu. Um, ask for a proportion of the cost. This shows that you've dedicated yourself to get folks in the community to help you out. Uh, does it benefit the community? If you can say yes to it, then you've got a good application coming your way. Uh, is it detailed? Can you can somebody when they read their when they read your application, can they see your project? Can they see the impacts and the benefits of your project? So those are things you could you should keep in mind while you're doing this application. You know, remember, write with the quality and not the quantity. So I'd like to thank you all for coming. And whenever you're ready to apply for the Youth Opportunities Fund, the, the, the link is on Key Club International, and it's on a submit table platform. And you'd, you have to make an account, which is it's super easy. You just need your email and a password. And um, the application is very similar to last year's application. So do you folks have any other questions? And I really appreciate you all coming here tonight to uh, listen to me talk about the Youth Opportunities Fund. Hey, Eric, this is Karen. And first, very well done. Thank you for that great presentation. Um, I know one comment that Foster had on this specific application is, as you pointed out, they did a very nice job of saying different budget amounts, but they ended up only asking for the smaller amount and so even though they had a dream budget where they could use more money, since they didn't ask the Youth Opportunity Fund to fund that much money, they couldn't give them the bigger grant. So if you're going to do the, the three budget suggestion or two budgets, whatever you want to do, if you want to do a realistic and a dream, ask for the dream amount, ask for the big amount, because if they like your project, um, and want to fund it at the dream level, you don't want them to be restricted because you only asked for the realistic level. Hi, my name is Alexis. I actually have a question. Um, say you do get the grant, do you have to use all of that money or are you, or do you have to use the money that you've been granted? Um, so if you end up with a surplus of money, 
you you have to send it back to the uh, use opportunities fund uh, um, office. So it's all right if you don't use all the money. Um, yes. So that that's basically it. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, so I don't know if this was like addressed earlier, but like I recall hearing from somewhere that um, you could apply for the Youth Opportunity Fund um, if you're like financially insecure and you need funds for ICON. Is that correct? Yes, that is true. So um, the Youth Opportunities Fund is a huge grant that offers scholarships, um, ICON grants, um, pro grants to support service projects. So it's a huge grant, and yes, so if you need financial support to attend ICON, please apply for the Youth Opportunities Fund. And Linda, I would make sure that in your application um, that you specify kind of what the demographics of your school or your club happens to be. You're kind of in line with what Eric was saying, go with quality information on explaining why um, a grant that goes towards ICON would be so beneficial for your students. Okay, thank you. And then also, so like, um, so not necessarily like one student has to apply for the grant, right? Like, the, like multiple students can apply for the grant together and then share the money? I don't have an answer on that. Um, Karen, would you know anything about that? Yeah, I think the way that the grant works is an individual requests the funds. Um, so if you were anticipating that you wanted a pool of funds that multiple members would share from, I think you would need to spell that out in your application. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that that was like even possible that like, you know, That's not necessarily multiple kids applying for the grant, but like one kid applying for the grant on behalf of like multiple students who are going. Yeah, you know, and, and I think um, they didn't address this specifically at ICON, um, but I personally would feel that that would be the better approach would be one student asking for a grant for their club to allow underprivileged students to be able to attend. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? I'm glad that Victoria feels it's not as intimidating or overwhelming as one might first think. Um, you know, Eric did a nice job of walking you through that application and it really, it's not rocket science. Uh, so I think that most key clubs in the Southwest District have a project that they have done that has a nice background of success that you could write up a grant application for. Yeah. All right, if there are no further questions, Eric, I want to thank you again. Excellent presentation, very helpful for our group. We are going to have this recording shared on our Facebook page and um, I'll get you a link, Eric, and you can put it on our other social media, and we'll share okay. it with our lieutenant governors for them to yes. share in their September newsletter. Oh, good. So if you folks have any other questions that you might have not thought of tonight, please feel free to send them to my email, the key to the southwest at gmail.com, or you can send it off to your lieutenant governor, and they'll be happy to help you out. So folks, I do hope that you all apply for this grant, because after all, free money. You can't beat free money. Thank you again for coming, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening.